What is going on in the housing market? What to expect from Fed speeches this week? We'll talk about the Fed beige book, Bitcoin, and I will even share with you my thoughts on CrossFit Workout 24.1. Uh, I did it this weekend and I thought I would share. So let's talk about housing. Uh, we got an update, uh, shout out Bill McBride. Bill McBride, great follow on Twitter or X. Uh, he was the first one to report the weekend's active listings. So as of March 4th, inventory is up 0.1% week on week. It is up 18.8% year on year. And just for grins, if you go back to 2019, we are still down 39.1%. So again, folks, one of the things that you and I need to be doing at the macro level is watching new listings and active inventory. In fact, later today, uh, we have an interview with Logan Matashami from Housing Wire. Uh, where we will go into all of the crash scenarios. Uh, look forward to that coming out later today. But yes, folks, watch housing at the macro, but please remember your job, yes, your job right there, is to watch housing at the micro. What is going on at your state, your metro, and most importantly, your buy box? Is your buy box seeing more listings? Is your buy box seeing more active inventory. Is your list, is your buy box seeing more price cuts? Let me know in the comments below. Are you doing the work? We talk all the time about how to get started one rental at a time. And it starts with understanding your buy box. So hey, show off a little bit. Do me a favor, show off this morning. Let me know in the comments below what's going on with new listings, active inventory, and price cuts. Let me know. I look forward to reading your comments below. Uh, let's talk about the Fed Beige Book. The Fed Beige Book usually slides under the radar. However, I think this week, and I think it's Wednesday when it comes out, will be an important read. We are on the cusp of really figuring out, are we in a rolling recession? Which again, as a student and somebody who has an econ degree, a rolling recession was always that theoretical thing that if the Fed got it right, or more importantly, the Fed got lucky, was theoretically possible. There is talk about 1991 being the best example of a rolling recession, but it's, it's kind of squishy. But the Fed Beige Book, what is it? The Fed Beige Book is basically a collection of economic data by regions. If the Fed Beige Book points at, if, if, it points out some regions coming out, perhaps manufacturing, for example, and some other regions struggling, it might give more credence to a rolling recession. The Beige Book is going to give us some color on that, and I look forward to seeing that. If the Beige Book, however, I believe it was last month, essentially most of the regions were reporting contraction or flat. Nobody was really saying we're growing. So again, we are going to be watching the Fed Beige Book on Wednesday. That's what I'll be looking for. Is it your typical recession where everything goes down or do we have hope for a rolling recession? We talked about yesterday, there are a lot of Fed speeches. I think we are going to be looking for three things. Three things, including Jerome Powell in front of Congress, where he will undoubtedly be grilled on lowering rates. What I will be looking for from all of the Fed speeches are one of three things. One, does any of them, any of them, even one, talk about the next move being higher? That will be interesting. That will shock the market. The market is pricing in higher for longer and the next move down. So is the Fed starting to talk about potentially going higher? Sticky inflation, strong job market, there you go. Number two, does any of the Fed presidents talk about no rate cut all year? Yes, man, this mic is good. Hi, Sonny. This, the audience, whoa, the audience wants to see you. 
Yes, this little guy wants to come up and say hi to the YouTube world. Hello, family. How are you? All right, there you go. Sit there. So again, anybody talking about a rate increase? Anybody talking about no cuts all year? And then finally, does any of the Fed presidents talk about a summer rate cut? I do not expect any Fed president to put a date on it. They will give ranges like the summer, like end of year. But that is what I will be looking for from the, Fe uh, the Fed speeches this week. Now, let's talk about jobs. This week is all about jobs. ADP, JOLTS report, and the Friday labor number on, uh, or the Friday's labor number on job creation for February. Here's the deal. Market expectations is 190 for Friday, for Friday. Here's the deal. We live in a world where if it comes in as a strong beat, and to put some numbers on a strong beat, I would call anything above 225. Anything above 225 and certainly anything above 250 would be a strong beat and a problem for those of you looking for a rate cut. If the job market, even given all of their wild calculations, if the job market comes in strong, meaning 225, let's say 250, on a 190 expectations, we will see rates go up. No question. If, if the number comes in weak, and let's say weak is 150 and below, that will give sign to rates going lower. Friday's number is that important. It just is that important. There are two things going on, inflation and jobs, stable prices and full employment. These are the Fed mandates. This week is about jobs. Last week was about inflation with PCE. So again, lots of stuff to watch for. Uh, let's talk about inflation. More and more news media is talking about something you and I have been talking about for six to eight months, and that is inflation, specifically shelter inflation. To remind you, shelter inflation is roughly 30% of uh, inflation calculation. It is the largest single component of inflation. And according to the Washington Post, rent cost is driving inflation for months with the official data showing last month that infl rent inflation was 6%. That's this many. When in reality, according to the Washington Post, rent is flat to down. What Washington Post goes on to say, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my honest effort to say this name, but I will not even be close. Here we go. Orphy, oh, this last name. Hmm. Devong, Devongai, senior economist at Zillow. I apologize for butchering your last name. Uh, the senior economist at Zillow thinks it could take two years, two years for rent inflation to get back to the 2% given the calculations. That is much longer than I anticipated. When I broke down rent inflation, I was right around nine to 12 months where we would go in and see rent inflation roll off hard. This is important. This is important. Yes, Wealth Building, that is the name. Orphe, yeah, Devong Guy. Not even close. Anyways, when you have 6% reported inflation and a third of that is rolling to the number, that's 2%. And remember, headline inflation was what? 2.9? So if you strip out rent, you're at 0.9. This is a big deal and something to look forward to. Other things that we need to highlight, I think there was a couple of very important videos that went live. I know a lot of you watch the channel Monday through Friday, taking the weekends off. I wanna highlight two videos that went live Sunday that you may have missed out. One, a conversation with Fred, a mental health professional. Fred was at the Las Vegas event. We had a conversation and I asked him if he'd come on the channel. Folks, the most valuable real estate is between your ears. Fred was gracious enough to say yes. We talked about moving from doubt to determined. We talked about the importance of doing the work. 
My hope is that we can talk to Fred at least monthly. He is obviously a very, very busy professional. And most importantly, I valued that conversation so much and I wanted to see that conversation continue that I've invited Fred to speak at next year's ORAT celebration in Vegas. So do me a favor, check that out. And then second, I gave away the opening presentation to ORAT 2024. That of course was Jason and Jen. Jason and Jen were always gonna be the opening act because I think it's important for couples to get on the same page. So I thought it was, I thought there was no reason to hide that presentation. I felt it was so valuable for my community. Lots of you are in relationships and money can be a stressor. The conversation that Jason and Jen gave at the opening session is that valuable that I gave it away for free. That is just a taste of what is in the event. The event is right now being sold for $199. I want to give you a $50 coupon code if you want to get a $50 off. It is simply ORAT 50K, all one word, O-R-A-A-T 50K. You'll save 50 bucks. You'll get all the discussions, the 21 podcasts, and uh, it's a great, great value. But again, I gave away Jason and Jen's speech. It is that important. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is racing again. It's at 65,000. It's kind of all over my Twitter feed. What does this mean to me? Nothing. If you are on my channel and you're a true OG, you will know that in 2018, I moved 1% of my net worth into cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then I put 10% in some crazy low ones that didn't pay off. But 90% went to Bitcoin and Ethereum. To me, these are insurance policies. It has always been an insurance policy. No, I am not buying more. No, I am not selling anything. Folks, it is insurance policy. Why is this important? Well, once you had the Bitcoin ETF go, once you had BlackRock accumulate $10 billion, I think it is clear. I think it is clear. In my opinion, there are more and more high net worth individuals that are moving a percent or two to cryptocurrencies. Why a percent or two? One, it doesn't hurt us if it goes to zero. It doesn't hurt us. I will not cry if I lose 1% of my net worth. I think more and more of the folks are doing that and they look at all of these ETFs as an, a, a form of legitimacy. So what you've seen in BlackRock in seemingly eight or nine weeks, again, remember getting to $10 billion and let's call it 10 weeks, it took the gold ETF two years. So I think it is very clear that more and more of the, I don't know, I'll say wealthy or rich are going, you know what? I'm going to buy an insurance policy, 1%. We'll see. Uh, it is nothing more, nothing less to me as an insurance policy. Again, not buying more, not selling. I haven't done a, I haven't done a single thing since 2018. I think that was November of 2018. It is just an insurance policy. And I am completely okay with that. And then finally, folks, for those of you that like CrossFit, CrossFit Open has opened up and I took a shot at what was called 24.1. 24.1 is a workout that had dumbbell snatch and burpees. It had a 15 minute time cap and I regret to tell you that I failed. It is one of the first CrossFit workouts I've done that I got what is called time capped. So, for those of you that are doing it, my score was 172. If you want to compare yourself to a 51 year old man, there you go. My score was 172. Uh, I will tell you if you do that workout, start with your weak arm. Also pace your burpees and get some good shoes. My feet were killing me by the end of that workout. Folks, I want you to have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment, become part of the ORAT family. And then lastly, remember, this shirt is only available in March. I'm only gonna have this shirt available in March. 
Thank you for everyone picking it up. We will, we will release a different shirt in April. Have an amazing day. Later. Bye.